Uh, thanks for taking a few minutes to talk with me about Acid Man. How are you today? Thank you. I'm good. And I'm so admiring your background. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, let's let's talk about the movie. Uh, you play uh, Maggie in this film. Uh, and, uh, talk to me about what drew you to the role. It's, it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a kind of a quirky little drama. Uh, and, uh, you know, so what, I'd like to know what what uh, attracted you to the to the part. I loved Alex Lehman's work. I made that known to him. And luckily, he had me in mind. He, he sent me this this movie and um, asked me to read it, asked to hop on a, a call. And we just discovered we both saw so much potential in this relationship and really built it out over the course of um, kind of the early days of... And, like <laughs> reluctant to even uh, mention this time, but the, you know, the pandemic and because we had time to build these characters and the story out even more, we just had really beautiful conversations with each other. Then once Thomas came involved, the three of us had hours and hours and hours that we just got to know each other and ponder what else we could explore with these characters um, so by the time that we got to Oregon, nine, 10 months later, we had really this understanding of who these people were, what had separated them and what the goals were, what, you know, these characters really hope to achieve with this reconciliation, you know, and Thomas's character, Lord, Lloyd has no clue that it's coming. I just show up, knock at the door yeah. and for me it's time and you know thomas's character lloyd has to wrap his brain around that he's seeing his daughter for the first time in almost a decade and for those who don't know uh the plot of without giving too much away your character maggie the strange from her from her father who's kind of living off the grid in, in oregon and uh and they sort of uh bond a little bit over his uh exploration of uh, uh extraterrestrials in outer space they, they find a kind of a connection there um after such a long time apart um do you was there, you talked about a little bit about you working with with alex on on the characters did you guys get to kind of flesh her out beforehand like uh did you uh, have like like um were there any particular scenes where you guys got to where you got to kind of uh, freestyle it a little bit or maybe reshape things a little bit there was i mean it it depends on the scene, but it, but over half of the movie is based in improv. And that oh, was wow. something that so drew me to the project. That's what Alex's films, Paddleton and Blue Jay, really how they were structured. And I just so wanted that experience. It was something that felt so exciting to me because in the phone calls that we had had leading up to the project, you know, we really did some great work as far as what our own personal truths with what we would share as our characters what perhaps we wondered if we were going to be able to bring once we we got there and scene by scene you kind of knew what the objective was mm -hmm. you know knock knock at the door i know that i have to say hey i'm here and i want you to be <laughs> happy that i'm here and and try to access this first moment with my dad you know but there were other scenes where the storytelling could really lean on what we created um, and I think in some of the moments that I love the most in the film, where they're just trying to relate to each other and they're just trying to share their own versions of, you know, their pain, their happiness, the things that they're most proud of, the things that they, uh, you know, want to achieve together. There was just so much that we were able to achieve because we had done the work prior to filming and that felt so special. And another thing that I didn't realize until after Thomas lives in Texas on this ranch and he was like, you know, I'm not a zoomer. I don't need to <laughs> the, let's just let's just old school phone call it. And I realized that um which is fine, you know, but I I I realized that by only being able to listen to his voice, the first time I saw him, Alex and I went to this local cafe in Oregon to meet him for the first time and I felt this feeling of like shock joy all of the things because it did feel like seeing him for the first time because we hadn't you know been face to face on a grainy a screen so that was very <laughs> that was very cool I really appreciated that that's amazing I was actually going to ask whether or not some of the scenes between you and Thomas um 
were 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 weren't necessarily from the script because your chemistry together felt very natural and and a lot of your scenes together and uh and you guys it's basically you two are almost the only characters in the movie except for maybe one more um so you share a lot of time together and like i said the chemistry between you two is really natural that's very kind i'm glad that you felt that way no absolutely uh considering what the around Thomas for sure he's somebody that I really admire but also by the end I felt like we were really friends <laughs> you have, I think you that, have to be here to confirm or deny that though I think that really comes across in the movie I mean I, I really <laughs> do um did you guys have any conversations about what you actually think about whether or not there's life out there you know because you know that is one of the one of the plot points of the movie and there's a lot of conversation around that between your characters what do you actually think? You know, I think that it wasn't something that we explored personal our our the majority of what we were sharing was was really character based, but I will say one of the first moments, one of the first funny kind of uh didn't see it coming moments was first week of shooting we're up in this location and and it's when he first shares to her he says maggie i want to take you i want to share something with you Mm -hmm. and we're shooting uh the sunset for sunrise it's really cold uh the wind is whipping us everybody is just it's one of those film moments where you know that when you watch it, you're going to forget how cold you are, but you are really battling <laughs> <You're right>. uh, <laughs> those those moments. And uh, the sun went down. We had one more sh- scene to shoot. And one of our crew members was like, oh, my God, look over there. And there was this cluster of lights. And it totally looked like what we're talking about. Wow. And people are debating on set. They're like, okay, so what is it actually? What could it be? Somebody Google it. And everyone was like, nobody Google anything right now. Let's just kind of have this moment because it was so fun and it got people out of their, you know, again, it's late, it's cold, it's all of these things. And we're kind of jumping up and down like little kids. And we're like, this is what this movie is about. Um, And so, you know, later, realized it was Starlink. So it's like, you know, satellite internet constellations and they change shape depending on how long uh, since they've been released into the atmosphere. And so it was just, that was something almost just a gift to our production. It was so unifying and it was so fun and special. Uh, And later on in the film, I think it was the last week of production, there was this moment where Alex was like in post, I'm going to put something in the sky. And so, you know, Maggie, you're going outside. And Mm -hmm. it's the first time your character is really starting to contemplate whether or not this could be something that exists. And she does see something. And then wouldn't you know it, it was like, again, it's been a long day. We've shot so many scenes. And John, um, you know, Matashak, our incredible DP, frames the thing. And he was like, oh, my God, Diana, don't move your head. It's Starlink again. It's actually coming through the frame. So just oh, wow. like you are in the right place. Do not move. And we're like, how again could this have happened? <laughs> the film gods are on our side. It's magic. It's movie magic. It's all of these things. So, yeah, we definitely had those moments, which were very, very fun. And um, some other fun and silly moments. We were watching uh, most of our uh, crew was was watching Close Encounters. And one of our members is like, I'm just going to get some rest. And we didn't know, but <laughs> Scott had been setting up lights outside of the window. So at the end of the film, when everything is happening, suddenly the entire living room is being flooded with red and green <laughs> and opening lights. And we're like, oh my God, it's real. <laughs> so we had plenty of moments that were very, very fun to bond and, and you know, <laughs> lean into the belief system of, you know, we're just very small and we know nothing. This sounds like it was a really special, uh, special kind of experience. Uh, for uh, and yeah. uh, uh, and I, I hope people go and check out the film Acid Man. Uh, it's going to be available this week in theaters and uh, on demand. Uh, so I hope people go and check it out. And I wish uh, Diana, you and the film the best of luck. Thank you very much. It's been great. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for checking out the show. 
If you like what we're laying down, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest stuff.